A good friend of mine once said, the price of freedom is high. It always will be. Yo, what up, what up, everyone? Tay here. And okay, so today what I want to talk about in this video is I, of course, want to talk about some of the news that's been coming out recently for Captain America 4 and the Thunderbolts. And I also want to talk about some of the old and newer leaks that have come out regarding both of those movies. And also a little bit about some of the stuff that Kevin Feige revealed at CinemaCon last week. So yeah, we're going to be talking about all of that, and of course, since I am going to be mentioning leaks here and there throughout the video, of course, with that could come potential spoilers, so here is your official spoiler warning, just in case. And then besides that, also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are new here and like the video. And also remember, if you would like to leave a super thanks with a question or a comment on this video, that those are always greatly appreciated, and that I will read and respond to those super thanks in the next video. All right, so as we know, besides the Fantastic Four movie, most of the other live-action MCU projects that we have coming out next year, which are Daredevil Born Again, Captain America Brave New World, and The Thunderbolts, are all going to be very grounded and street-level projects. But before we get into the leaks and theories and talk about those projects and kind of, you know, what's going to happen in those, first we have to talk a bit about the comics that will influence those projects. Because, as I've talked about in the past when kind of talking about the grounded stuff, I think that these projects that will come out next year will all be connected to some degree in that they will be adapting story elements from both the Dark Reign and Devil's Reign comic runs, where the U.S. government turned against superhumans and legit superheroes, branding them as threats and enemies to the state. Now, obviously, I think there will be other comic runs that will influence these projects as well, but I do think that Dark Reign and Devil's Reign will be two of the biggest overall influences. And based on the ending of the Echo series, on top of all the set photos that we've already seen from Daredevil Born Again, it's already very clear that the Daredevil series will definitely be adapting story elements from the Devil's Reign comic, where Wilson Fisk became the mayor of New York and then declared war on superhumans and vigilantes by instituting his own anti-vigilante task force. But instead of talking about Devil's Reign, I really want to talk about the Dark Reign story real quick. Because overall, I do think that that's the story that will be especially influential on both Captain America 4 and the Thunderbolt, as well as potentially any other grounded or street-level projects we will see after that in Phase 6, like Spider-Man 4 or the Armor Wars movie if that actually happens, etc. And the two comic stories that came directly before Dark Reign that were a huge influence on kind of setting up the whole Dark Reign story were the comics versions of Civil War and Secret Invasion. Now, the leading character in Dark Reign was Norman Osborn. And what happened in that story was during the events of Civil War, Norman Osborn actually ended up being recruited by the government to work on behalf of the pro-registration side and was appointed to become the new director of the Thunderbolts under the newly passed Thunderbolts Initiative. And what the Thunderbolts initiative actually did was it activated the Thunderbolts to legally be a government-sponsored team who could be sent out on missions to hunt down and capture any superhumans or vigilantes who refused to register under the Superhuman Registration Act. And then one of the big comic events that came shortly after that was the Skrull invasion of Earth in the Secret Invasion story. And at the end of the Secret Invasion story, it was actually Norman Osborn and the Thunderbolts who landed the final blow to the Skrulls by taking out the Skrull Queen. 
And that event made the Thunderbolts, and especially Norman Osborn, into huge public heroes who were largely applauded for being the ones to win the war. And then on the flip side of that situation, you also had the public's trust in legitimate superheroes like the Avengers largely being diminished, with a lot of the public blaming Tony Stark and other heroes like the Avengers for the Skrull invasion happening in the first place. And because of this, Tony Stark was forced to give up Stark Tower and to step down as Iron Man and also step down as the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. And with Norman Osborn now being this famous new hero that everyone loved, the government actually appointed him to be the new director of S.H.I.E.L.D., which was reformed into Hammer, and also appointed him to take over Stark Tower. So with this huge level of new power under the government, Norman Osborn's next move was to create a new Avengers team, with him acting as the director and team leader. However, his Avengers team, the Dark Avengers team, was not actually made up of legitimate heroes, but instead it was mostly villains dressed as heroes. In fact, half of the Dark Avengers team were actually previous Thunderbolts members who had just taken on new identities as Avengers heroes. So Bullseye became the new Hawkeye, Matt Gargan's Venom became the new Spider-Man, Moonstone became Miss Marvel, and Norman Osborn became the new Iron Man, the Iron Patriot. And of course, one of the other really important members of the Dark Avengers team was Robert Reynolds, the Sentry, who we know will be a very big part of the Thunderbolts movie. And I just wanted to lay all this out real quick because, like I said, I think this story, the Dark Reign story, as well as its future sequel, the Devil's Reign comic, are going to be huge influences on these upcoming MCU projects. And that when it comes to the upcoming political, grounded, and street-level side of the MCU, that we are basically entering kind of the Dark Reign era of the MCU. Now, obviously, a lot of the characters will be different from the comics, and Norman Osborn probably won't factor into the MCU's version of this story at all. But overall, I do think that the theme will largely be there. And I do think that Marvel Studios have slowly been paving the way for this era of the MCU ever since Captain America Civil War, and that they have continued to set this up in more recent MCU shows, like Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Secret Invasion. However, the project that I think will kind of really kick all of this off is Captain America Brave New World. And I actually think that this is a big part of the reason why it's called Brave New World to be kind of an indicator that this is a new era for the political and grounded side of the MCU, where we will see more villainous characters like Thaddeus Ross, Valentina, and Wilson Fisk, all now holding these high-level positions in government. As Ben Grimm, The Thing. The other movie is shooting right this second as we speak, uh, also for IMAX, and that is Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts, and yes, you'll notice an asterisk at the end of that title. That is the official title of the movie, is Thunderbolts with a asterisk. And we won't talk any more about that until after the movie comes out. Okay, so now that we've kind of gone through the comics and talked about that, now let's actually get into some of the leak and theory talk on where things will be going with Captain America 4 and the Thunderbolts in the MCU. Because during the CinemaCon event that happened last week, Kevin Feige revealed some details on the Thunderbolts movie, as well as a little bit of footage from Captain America 4. And one of the things that Feige talked about at CinemaCon was the updated Thunderbolts title, which now has this little asterisk at the end of it. And Feige said that this asterisk is actually an official part of the movie's title, but that the reason for it won't be revealed until the movie comes out. And there was actually an interesting scoop or leak or whatever you want to call it that dropped a few days after that, but has since been deleted from Atlanta filming, where he referred to the Thunderbolts movie as Thunderbolts Part 1. And Atlanta filming isn't really a full-on leaker or scooper. You know, he's a photographer. 
But when he does drop leaks, they are usually reliable because they are coming from things that he has directly seen on set. So this makes me wonder if the Thunderbolts movie is actually being referred to as Thunderbolts Part 1 internally or on the set of the movie, and that that could be a big part of why we see the asterisk in the movie's title. Because if Marvel Studios are referring to the Thunderbolts movie as Thunderbolts Part 1 internally, then that would seem to suggest that Marvel Studios already have a follow-up or a sequel of some kind mapped out to some degree and maybe even scripted or in some stage of pre-production. And this actually wouldn't be out of place with what Marvel Studios have been doing currently because this is exactly what they are doing with Daredevil Born Again where they are splitting the show into two parts or two seasons and the second season has already been written and mapped out, and Marvel will actually start filming the second season later this year. So perhaps this is the same thing they are doing with the Thunderbolts movie, where they already have some kind of follow-up or sequel mapped out and in some level of pre-production. Now, if the Thunderbolts movie is a part one of a bigger story, then of course this brings up the question, what will part two be? Will it just be a Thunderbolt sequel, or will it actually be a new movie with a different title that just ties in to what's been set up in the Thunderbolts movie? And I'm sure you guys know where I'm going with this, and that is, what if the Thunderbolts movie is setting up a direct sequel that will actually be a Dark Avengers movie? And I know this has already been the leading theory online, but in this case, I think it's the leading theory for a reason, because this would make a lot of sense. Because one of the things we've heard in some of the different leaks and scoops for the Thunderbolts movie is that the Thunderbolts team that we will see in the movie have actually been brought together as almost like an experiment where they are sent on some kind of death mission that they aren't meant to return from, Almost like Valentina is using them as a test run to set up a secondary team or maybe to test out the abilities of the Sentry. So maybe the asterisk we see in the title is there because the Thunderbolt's name is kind of used that way in the movie as a code name that's disguising a different project. However, another possibility and something I've been thinking about is that perhaps the asterisk is there as a way that will tie into the Thunderbolts initiative being introduced in the movie as a way for the government to kind of formally replace the Avengers and the Avengers initiative with the Thunderbolts team and the Thunderbolts initiative. Because that is definitely something that would fall in line with everything we've been talking about with where the MCU is going with all the grounded and street level stuff. Because, like I said, in the comics, the Thunderbolts initiative was put in place so that the Thunderbolts team could legally be used for the purpose of hunting down and arresting superhumans and vigilantes who have refused to register under the Superhuman Registration Act. And in some of the recent set photos we've seen for Daredevil Born Again, we see photos of this new military-like police unit that have these patches on their arm that say Mayor Fisk's Anti-Vigilante Task Force. And this is exactly like what we saw in the Devil's Reign comic, where Mayor Fisk passed the Powers Act, which outlawed vigilantes and superhumans. And the fact that Wilson Fisk is passing a new anti-vigilante law in New York City could just be a part of some kind of larger national laws that get passed by Thaddeus Ross that will also outlaw superhumans and vigilantes on a much larger scale once we get to Captain America 4 or the Thunderbolts. Because as we know from his history throughout the MCU, Thaddeus Ross has notoriously not been a fan of superheroes, mainly because they work as individuals as opposed to acting like a military unit that works directly under him or directly under the government. However, there is something interesting on that note, and that is, according to the people who saw the footage of Captain America 4 at CinemaCon, they described a scene where Sam meets with the newly elected President Ross in the White House, 
where Ross asks Sam if he would be willing to reassemble the Avengers team under his new presidency because he says that while he has never been a fan of the Avengers, that it's important that they unite right now so they can be prepared for other bigger threats. However, the people that saw the footage also said that during this scene, it seems like Sam doesn't trust Ross and the reasons why he wants the Avengers to come together because Sam suspects that he has ulterior motives. However, it is also worth noting that one of the things we've heard in numerous leaks and scoops is that a reoccurring theme that will come up in these grounded and street level projects is that of there now being this global superhuman arms race with different governments, corporations, and villainous factions trying to get a hold of different superhuman technologies like Iron Man tech, super soldier serums, and also exotic metals like vibranium and adamantium. And this definitely lines up with other leaks we've heard about the super soldier serum and the race to claim adamantium being big plot elements in both Captain America 4 and the Thunderbolts. So this whole concept about President Ross trying to unite the Avengers under his presidency because of bigger domestic threats out there might not be that far-fetched. However, we also know that Thaddeus Ross is being set up to be the main villain of Captain America 4. So regardless of what other threats are out there facing America in the MCU, it does not seem very likely that Sam will actually unite the Avengers under President Ross in the movie. And that fact right there could directly tie into setting up the Thunderbolts movie and potentially the introduction of the Thunderbolts initiative. Because if the Avengers aren't willing to work under President Ross and his new government, then it makes sense that Ross and Valentina would try to put together a new team that would do that because they would be forced to. And again, like I said, in the comics, the Thunderbolts initiative was put in place to allow the Thunderbolts to legally go out and hunt down superhumans who refuse to register under the Superhuman Registration Act. Now, the closest thing we've seen to the Superhuman Registration Act in the MCU has been the Sokovia Accords. But early in Phase 4, it was actually revealed that the Sokovia Accords had been repealed. However, something I've talked about in past videos is I think that Marvel Studios have been laying the groundwork for something even stricter than the Sokovia Accords to take its place. Because if you guys remember, in the end credits for Falcon and the Winter Soldier, each episode would drop new hints and Easter eggs in these images accompanying the end credit scenes. And most of these hints came in the form of little excerpts from different kinds of top secret government documents. And several of these documents seem to be directly hinting at some kind of new government program to both monitor and register, quote, enhanced individuals. Because in this frame, the text says, According to Thaddeus Ross, information regarding the Enhanced Humans Act has been reported to be classified. And then in this other one, it says, Identities must reveal their legal names and true identities to the United Nations and must agree to power analysis, which will categorize dot 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 and then it trails off. And I know I've talked about these Easter eggs before, but that's because they seem to be a really big and very direct hint at where Marvel Studios are going. And we know that Malcolm Spellman, the writer of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, is also the same person who wrote the script for Captain America 4. And the fact that the first image directly references Thaddeus Ross and something called the Enhanced Humans Act, when we know that Ross will now be the new president in Captain America 4, makes me think that in that movie, Thaddeus Ross will likely announce a new kind of superhuman registration program called the Enhanced Humans Act that will actually end up being much stricter than the Sokovia Accords were. Because the Sokovia Accords only applied to active superheroes. It didn't apply to the populace at large. But based on what we see in these Easter eggs, it sounds like the Enhanced Humans Act could be something that is much broader and could apply to anyone out there in the population that has any kind of powers, regardless of whether or not they are actively going out and acting as a hero. 
and something like this would probably also apply to any aliens who are living on Earth as well, like the Asgardians who are now living on Earth in Norway. So yeah, you can see how if some program like this were instituted in the MCU, how it could create this huge backlash from the superhero community and could create this huge divide where many of Earth's biggest heroes could automatically become enemies of the state and fugitives if they refuse to register under this new act. And if Thaddeus Ross and the government does implement a new program, like potentially the Enhanced Humans Act, that forces superhumans to register their powers and abilities, this could also be the perfect way to set up the introduction of something like the Thunderbolts Initiative or the introduction of the Dark Avengers. Because if the government does initiate a new registration program, then they are going to need a new team or unit to enforce that. And they can't just use regular old police because they would be going up against people with superpowers. So just like what happened during the Superhuman Registration Act in the comics, the government could implement the Thunderbolts initiative for the purpose of creating a team to go out and combat and arrest those who refuse to register their powers. Now this is more like it. Things are about to get weird. So when they do, we're not gonna need a Captain America. We're gonna need a US agent. That's great. Keep your phone on. All right, so now that we've kind of talked about all that and set everything up, now let's talk a little bit about what a Dark Avengers project could actually look like or what Marvel Studios could be doing with the whole Dark Avengers thing. Now, like I said, the chances of Norman Osborn being a part of all this in the MCU is very slim, unless by some chance he were to be introduced in Spider-Man 4. But it looks like one of the characters that will largely be taking on a lot of that Norman Osborn role in the MCU will actually be Valentina because as we know, she is the current director of the CIA in the MCU, and she will also be the director of the Thunderbolts team. And one of the big mysteries that's been going on ever since Spider-Man Homecoming in the MCU is everybody wondering who actually bought Avengers Tower. And one of the leaks out there says that the person who actually bought Avengers Tower will end up being revealed to be Valentina herself. Now, I know there are a lot of theories about who bought Avengers Tower, ranging from the Fantastic Four to Mephisto to Kingpin, but I gotta say, it would make a lot of sense for Valentina to be the one who acquired Avengers Tower, especially if Marvel Studios are kind of delving into the Dark Reign era of the MCU. Which, if it is revealed in Captain America 4 or the Thunderbolts that Valentina is the one who bought Avengers Tower, then I think that would be, you know, basically confirmation 100% that Marvel Studios are setting up the Dark Avengers. Now, we don't know if that would actually mean that the team will be called the Dark Avengers or if we get a Dark Avengers movie. It could just be that the Thunderbolts will act as the Dark Avengers and adapt that storyline. Or maybe the Thunderbolts movie will actually set up a Dark Avengers movie because we have heard rumors about there being a third Avengers movie in development for Phase 6 that would not be Avengers 5 or Avengers Secret Wars. And thus far, when we've talked about that, we've just kind of assumed that if that's true, that it would mean that Marvel Studios are basically turning the Secret Wars story into a trilogy. However, maybe that's not the case, and maybe the third Avengers movie that's being talked about will actually be a more grounded street-level movie and will be adapting from the Dark Avengers story and will be mostly unrelated to the multiverse stuff happening and everything that's setting up Secret Wars. However, if Marvel Studios are setting up a Dark Avengers story of some kind, there's also the possibility that the Dark Avengers could appear as the antagonists or villains in a different character's film. For instance, they could always use the Dark Avengers as the villains in Black Panther 3 or Thor 5. Because if Marvel Studios are going to do some kind of Dark Avengers plot, 
then I think the comic story that would make the most sense for them to adapt from is the Siege comic, which the Siege comic was basically just like the final chapter and the ending of the Dark Reign story. And the Siege storyline revolved around the Dark Avengers team leading a siege against the city of Asgard, which at that point in the comics was located in Broxton, Oklahoma in the U.S. And because the government saw superhumans and aliens as a threat, their goal was to take down Asgard because Asgard was the home to the Asgardians and many other aliens and superhumans who had went there to seek refuge. So, of course, what happens is we see the Dark Avengers invade Asgard with a whole fleet of Hammer Helicarriers, and all of the Avengers and other Earth heroes rush to Asgard to help protect it from the Dark Avengers. So the whole story is basically the Dark Avengers and Hammer against the Avengers and Thor and the Asgardians. And it's a really good, huge, epic event comic that would definitely make for a great, grounded level event in the MCU. And Marvel Studios adapting this story in Phase 6 would definitely make sense because, like in the comics, in the MCU, New Asgard is now located on Earth in Norway and has become a home not only to Asgardians, but also other aliens living on Earth who need a home. And at the end of the Secret Invasion series, we saw the current president, President Ritson, doing an emergency broadcast where he announced that due to the Skrull's invasion of Earth, that he is now presenting to Congress an emergency bill that would designate not just the Skrulls, but all off-world beings on Earth as enemy combatants. We're a shape-shifting, alien-born species known as Skrulls. That is why tonight I'm presenting to Congress for immediate emergency authorization a bill that designates all off-world-born species enemy combatants. We know who you are. We know how to find you. So if that emergency bill was authorized, then that would mean that the U.S. basically just declared that not just the Skrulls, but also the Asgardians, are now enemies of the U.S. And you also have to remember that in the Marvels movie, after Carol and the others rescued dozens of Skrulls from space, we saw this scene where there was a surprise cameo from Valkyrie where she took all those Skrull refugees back to New Asgard until Carol could find the Skrulls a new home. So those two scenes from Secret Invasion and the Marvels have already paved the way for a siege storyline in the future of the MCU to where we could see the Dark Avengers or the Thunderbolts lay an attack on New Asgard. And if this did happen, I would hope that Marvel Studios would do a story like this in a Dark Avengers movie or a Thunderbolts movie and not in Thor 5, because I'm really hoping that Thor 5 will be more of a cosmic kind of multiversal story that will tie into the ending of Loki Season 2 and kind of help to set up Avengers Secret Wars. But if they did end up doing the Siege storyline in Thor 5, I would also be okay with that as well, because the Siege storyline is a really good story, and I would just be happy to see it in the MCU either way. But yeah, hopefully they would do it in a Dark Avengers movie, not a Thor movie. And another movie where they could possibly use the Dark Avengers as villains is also in Black Panther 3. Because in Wakanda Forever, Valentina made several comments about wanting to attack Wakanda so they can steal their vibranium. Or another possibility is that Marvel Studios could tie the Dark Avengers story into the World War Hulk story. But if the scoop or rumor about the Thunderbolts movie being a part one, you know, if that scoop is true, then it sounds more likely that Marvel Studios will actually be making a Thunderbolts Dark Avengers type sequel as opposed to using the Dark Avengers as the antagonist in another character's movie. However, if that is the case and that's what they're doing, then there is one problem, and that is that it doesn't seem like there's very much room for another movie to be added to the Phase 6 slate. Because as we know, Marvel Studios have greatly slowed down the amount of projects they are doing recently, and starting with 2026, Bob Iger has said that there will only be three MCU films and one live-action show coming out each year. 
Now, I guess they could always do a Dark Avengers movie in Phase 7, but the only problem with that is, is that we know that Marvel is likely going to do a soft reboot or reset of the MCU at the end of the Secret Wars movie. So, in my opinion, it seems like Marvel Studios is probably going to try to wrap up any loose narratives and storylines before we get to the Secret Wars movie. That way they can start relatively fresh after that with a new saga. However, one thing that was recently confirmed by Bob Iger is that Marvel Studios have already canceled several upcoming projects that they didn't feel as confident in and are replacing those with bigger, more important projects that they do feel confident in. Now, they haven't announced any canceled projects as of yet, but one of the projects I think might be on the chopping block, and I've talked about this in the past, is the Armor Wars movie. Because that movie was announced all the way back in 2020 or 2021, and we still haven't heard any concrete production updates or when it will release. So based on stuff that Bob Iger has said recently, I wouldn't be at all surprised if Marvel Studios actually ends up replacing the Armor Wars movie with a Dark Avengers movie. Because one of the things we have actually heard about the Armor Wars movie in some of the older leaks and scoops is that supposedly the movie will continue on with this concept of there being a global superhuman arms race and that because of that, villainous factions within the U.S. government start to create a new wave of Iron Man technology and Iron Man suits, which would then put Rhodey at odds with the government in a battle to try and stop that from happening. And based on those old scoops, it already sounds like the plot of the Armor Wars movie easily fits into this whole Dark Reign narrative we've been talking about. Because what this kind of reminds me of is actually the Dark Avengers comics. Because in that story, when Norman Osborn takes over Stark Tower, he also gains access to all of Tony Stark's Iron Man suits and technology, and that is how he becomes the Iron Patriot. And I gotta say, back when we saw Rhodey's updated version of the Iron Patriot armor in the ending of Avengers Endgame, my thought was, oh, they've introduced this new, cooler, darker version of the Iron Patriot armor in this movie, so they can set up some kind of Dark Avengers Iron Patriot scenario down the road where some villain can then take it over, just like Norman Osborn did in the comics. And that Iron Patriot armor seemed to be, you know, in pretty decent shape by the end of Avengers Endgame, so it's probably still out there, and Marvel Studios could easily bring that armor back, or an updated version of it, for a Dark Avengers movie as well. Now, like I said, it probably won't be Norman Osborn who will wear it in the MCU, but maybe someone like Justin Hammer, or, you know, maybe even Baron Zemo, because even though Zemo is reportedly not in the Thunderbolts movie, I definitely think he will still factor into the Thunderbolt story or a Thunderbolt sequel or a Dark Avengers movie in some way because the ending of Falcon and the Winter Soldier made it abundantly clear that Valentina is working with Zemo. And in the old Thunderbolts comics, Zemo's heroic alternate persona as a Thunderbolt member was Citizen V, where he did wear this Captain America Iron Patriot-esque armor that, you know, had this patriotic theme. So, you know, it could definitely be somebody else besides Zemo as well. It could be some other villain I'm not thinking of right now, but that's just, you know, worth pointing out and throwing out there as well. So maybe what Marvel Studios could end up doing is maybe they will actually replace the Armor Wars movie with the Dark Avengers movie, and they could actually fold certain plot elements from the Armor Wars movie into the Dark Avengers script, and maybe they could even still use Rhodey as a big character in that movie who is trying to stop the Dark Avengers. And I mean, of course, this is just like, you know, loose speculation, but if a Dark Avengers or, you know, Thunderbolt sequel or whatever is on the way, you know, that's another grounded kind of street level movie to potentially be added into phase six when Marvel Studios are also going to be doing all this crazy multiversal stuff in the build up to Avengers 5 and Avengers Secret Wars. So this just seems like another potential reason why the Armor Wars movie may end up being put on the back burner. Because, I mean, from Bob Iger's perspective, a Dark Avengers movie sure seems like it would be much bigger and make a lot more money than an Armor Wars movie. 
So yeah, you know, you guys let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. Do you think this is likely to happen? And, and do you even want to see a Dark Avengers movie? And are you excited about the street level and grounded MCU stuff? Or are you more interested in the multiversal side of the MCU and everything that will be happening in phase six to build up Avengers Secret Wars? I mean, I'm personally excited about both, but uh, yeah, a Dark Avengers movie definitely gets me excited, and I do hope that is what Marvel Studios are doing and where this is all headed. So yeah, you guys let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I think at this point we can wrap this one up. And I don't think we need to do a whole long super thanks segment today because I just have two short ones to respond to from the last video, and that is we have $5 from Gator Chris and also $5 from Mr. Paul Sanford. So as always, thank you very much, Paul and Chris. I always appreciate you guys. And for those of you who are watching, remember that if you would like to leave a super thanks with a question or a comment, that those really help out the channel a lot and are greatly appreciated, and that I will read and respond to those super thanks in the next video. So yeah, I think that covers it. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new here. And also don't forget to come follow the channel on Twitter for updates or just to say what's up. And remember, if you missed any of the other recent videos, you can find those linked in the description down below. And yeah, I think that covers it. I hope you guys like this one and I will be back soon.